हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू वीडियो क्या हाल आई होप इट इन गुड इन दिस बिजनेस फॉर्म मैक्सिमम टोटल डैमेज विद स्पेल कास्टिंग फ्रॉम नंबर फोर इज ऑलरेडी लाइव यू कैन जस्ट गो एंड चेक द ऑन द चैनल इट इट सिंपली सेज दैट वी हैव सम मैजिकल स्पेल्स नाउ ईच स्पेल हैज अ स्पेसिफिक पावर एंड दैट पावर रिप्रेजेंट्स दैट अ स्पेल कैन डू दैट मच अमाउंट ऑफ डैमेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन द क्वेश्चन यू कैन सी आई हैव अ स्पेल विद The power as one, power as one, power as three, power as four. So I have four spells, each having this much power, and they can deliver that much amount of damage. Cool. Now it is a known fact that a magi magician decides to cast a spell with a damage of power of five, which means he will choose any of these spell having that power, power of five. But if he chooses that spell of power of five, he cannot choose the spell of power of i minus one, power of i minus two. Power of i plus one and power of i plus two. He cannot choose these powers if he choose to take the power of i. Others he can choose. Power of i plus three, four, five. He can choose. But if he plan to choose power of i, he cannot choose these four powers. Okay. I have to tell again. Each spell can be casted only once. So this spell of power one can be casted once. This spell of power one can be casted once. Again, these are two spells having the same power. they are not the same spells these are two spells having the same power cool i have to tell what is the maximum possible total damage which i can do now if we start thinking greedily again for me the prime concerning part is for a specific cell for for a, for a specific spell having that much power this shows i have a spell with a power of 1 i am only worried to not take Power of zero, power of minus one, power of two, and power of three. If I choose to take a spell of power of one, I cannot choose these spells having this power. So um, the question will be that I don't worry about how many spells of one are there. If I can take one of these spell having one power, I can take all of these spells having one power, one as a power. so i just thought one thing okay let's collect let's collect my powers only different powers only and i represented the number of such spells how many such spells having this power i have now my question boils down to out of all these distinct spells having distinct powers how many or what all spells i should choose right so it is same way okay you are given an array of these values 1 3 4 you have to choose some spells which means you have to choose a sub you have to choose some subsequence out of this specific input array such that your total summation is maximum your 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 your, your, your entire summation of that subsequence is maximum so obviously what i will do i know that i can choose a subsequence for a specific input array how many subsequence you have You have to choose a number of subsequences. You will try to generate all the possible subsequences, and then for every subsequence, go and check if it's a valid spell configuration or not. How to check that? Simply to go and check that, you will take your subsequence. Let's say you have input elements as let's say eight elements. Out of these randomly, you choose four elements. After choosing those four elements, which is the subsequence for you, you can choose this, 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 and this. you choose those four elements those four spells and that is your subsequence out of those four subsequence just go and verify that it is a good subsequence what what i mean by good is if i take this if the spell power is let's say p or let's say element i should not take element again i should not take element minus 1 element minus 2 element plus 1 element plus 2 so that should not be present inside my array or inside my subsequence if that is the case it's a good subsequence now to check that you can either sort and check or you can also take a hash map and check so you can take both as o of n or o of n log n as a complexity both will work right both will work n log n sorry n log n both will work so roughly you will see okay you are going brute force way it will generate all these subsequence that's a pain for you you cannot do that because n is very large n is 1e5 you cannot generate all the possible subsequences that is not not allowed now what's a what's a case it's the same problem you have given an array you have to generate a subsequence and that subsequence should follow something should follow some criteria 
हाउ टू नो दैट कैन बी अप्लाई डीपी और नॉट फॉर श्योर ब्रो एज सुन एज द वर्ड केम इन सब्सिक्वेंस इट सिंपली से इज दैट यू हैव एन आर एफ लेट से फाइव एलिमेंट्स सब्सिक्वेंस वी बिल्ड बाई taking not taking choose not choose take not take take not take take not take that is how we generate the subsequence in the first place thus it's a simple take not take problem which is a simple dp problem for us how simple if we go and check our standard problem which we have seen a lot, a lot of times longest increasing subsequence exactly the same but it's just that a small change we want a subsequence with having the maximum sum having the maximum sum so you can say again i hope that you know about dp and stuff if not just go and watch this video but now the problem simply boils down to subsequence having the largest sum with some condition that condition we will incorporate so now let's come on again as i have telling in the standard dp problems come on to a random index now you have two options either you take that index or you will not take that index for me okay let's say i let's let's imagine i take that index or i might not take that index take or not take if you take that index which means you will for sure take this specific element which means you will take 3 but you know that i have also kept the frequency of every element so let's imagine again it is not that you have to maintain the frequency you can also distribute them and then you can take that also like that will also work i'll show you but for simplicity just to not get confused i took the frequency of every every spell power so 3 is there and the frequency of 3 is 1 okay which means i am taking the specific spell of power 3 now if i take the spell of power 3 my condition is i cannot take 2 or 1 which means anything less than 1 i can take anything less than 1 i can take so it feels obvious that i have to go and find the spell which is less than 1 inside my array and then take its dp value because dp value will store me maximum sum because again maksad nahi bolna hai your main aim was to get the maximum sum largest sum so your dp value itself will store the maximum sum so it is technically saying if i am at 3 i will have to search for a spell lesser than 1 by lesser than 1 because 3 is there you you cannot take 2 you cannot take 1 which means anything lesser than 1 you can take So I have to search for something lesser than one inside my data structure, whatsoever I have, lesser than one, and then whatsoever I have for sure lesser than one, I have only zero, as in like nothing. You can say I have to have take its DP value. So I will take the DP value of that back element. For I am referring the back element as an element which is lesser than element minus two. And again, I have to search for that lesser than element minus two inside my array itself. Inside my array itself. i will show you why i am saying lesser than element minus 2 inside my array you might say aryan why it is required to search for inside my array i can just simply search for, okay i have a let's say element 5 i can go and simply search for a element i want okay 4 and 3 i can take 2 or less than 2 you are saying that part right but i am saying if i have a 1 inside my array if the array looks like 1 4 or uh, it looks like 1 3 and 5 If I am at this specific i, I should go and search for element lesser than three. Lesser than three inside my array is one. I cannot take lesser than three as two. Why? Because I will have to go and ask for the DP value of lesser than three element. Now I am only storing the DP values of one, three, five. I am not storing the DP value of two. So if I will go and ask the DP value of two, it will give me zero. But I should go and ask the DP value of one because it will give me some value. So so that's the reason I realized I cannot take the DP of index. That I cannot take. I have to take the DP of element itself because I am going and searching for the DP value of the element only, not the index. Okay. So far we realized if we take an element, let's say three in this case, I will take the element. its corresponding frequency that much power he will give me or that much damage he can give me and then i will look for the back element back element is element which is lesser than element minus 2 just to know or to search that element you can simply either you could have gone and done a linear search but i will not do i will do a binary search if i do a binary search i will simply land on to any element which is lesser than element minus 2 again 
to go at the element equal to or more than element minus 2 it is lower bound now just lesser than element minus 2 just do a minus minus which means minus 1 because see lower bound is an iterator it's a pointer minus minus will give you the previous pointer or roughly saying element lesser than element sorry iterator at element lesser than element minus 2 cool so we realize okay we can just simply get this and uh, we simply now know why we are storing dp of element and not the index because here we need dp of element itself now what if i don't take it which means if if i don't take the current element so whatsoever answer i have stored previously that should be the maximum answer which means dp of this previous element now again see this is the previous element in your array or in your data structure which you have built so far so this is a db of previous element current element is 3 previous element is 1 back element is element lesser than element minus 2 both are different and that is the only state again i did not went on to the entire recursive approach for this is because it is exactly same as that of the previous problem of lis or you can say if you just modify it and say give me the long largest or give me the subsequence having the maximum sum with some condition cool now let's have a quick 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 dry run simply for an initial value dp of one you are finding it will be maximum of what if you don't take this value if you don't take this if you don't take this it means you will go and ask existing previous maximum dp value so far stored there is no previous so i can simply say dp of zero again because of no previous i am saying dp of zero if they would have been previous so i would have taken that previous itself now it is i will not take it what if i take it if i take it okay one will be there one will be the element and one element spell of damage one is occurring only once so okay it is one then go and search for the back element back element is any number or any spell which is less than again i cannot take zero i cannot take minus one anything less than minus one is my considerate considerable back element so for me the back element is nothing because my elements itself is starting from one itself so my back element i can just say zero or you can also say as minus two or like anything but for you it is not even existing so if your dp value because i will take my dps an ordered map simple because these are the values dp is storing a value value is value can be anything now if i just look at anything anything can be one e nine so i cannot make this much big array so i have to take for sure an unordered map just to show the dp value itself so i'll take an unordered map and thus an unordered map of any value let's say minus two also that will give me a zero or i can say that even that even does not exist inside my array so it's, it's also a zero by default now okay dp of one is done let's come on to dp of six to find dp of six again dp of six dp of previous element what if i don't take it if i don't take it whatsoever existingly maximum i have got which means up till so far so far as in dp of previous element is one so whatsoever is a dp of one that can be maximum element so dp of one is the maximum element dp of previous dp of one dp of one what if i take it if i take it i will incur a damage of six for one spell but i have two spells so i'll incur a damage of six into two plus 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 go and search for a value which is lesser than four lesser than four inside this data structure again how to do it simply one way is either sort the array other ways you want you want to grab the frequency you want to sort the array one thing which can do both of you like one thing which can do both for you is map simple map ordered map it will sort also it will give the frequency also so i can either sort or grab the frequency in an unordered map or i can merge them and take a map which will sort also and take the frequency also so i took a map itself and on the map i will go and search for element which is lesser than four which means simply doing a lower bound on four and low, low and after doing a lower bound of four do a minus minus to go on to the previous iterator and take its corresponding value star take its, its corresponding value then you have its value dot first will give you its value itself make sure to do a bracket will give you its value itself considering that minus minus can only be done when this lower bound of four is not the begin that's a simple data structure things that you can do a minus minus of an iterator considering it is not at the beginning if it's at the beginning you cannot go beyond like you cannot go before beginning cool so i will go and search for element lesser than four lesser than four i'll simply do a binary search i will land on to one 
then I will take the DP of 1. Okay, DP of 1. Thus, I received a DP of 6 as 13, which is the maximum sum up till this point is 13. Okay, what, if, what about DP of 7? Cool. Either I don't take this, which means maximum sum up till so far, which is 13, right? What if I take this? If I take this, okay, 7 frequency of 1, 7 frequency of 1, and then DP of anything lesser than 5. Anything lesser than 5, again, DP of 1. Lesser than 5, DP of 1. Simply getting a value of 8, again, taking maximum, I'll get a value of 13. And thus, voila, my maximum answer is 13 itself. So, cool. Let's code up. Uh, the code looks very simple. Firstly, we grab the frequency. This frequency will help me one thing in grabbing the frequency and also in getting the lower bound stuff done, which means element lesser than my element minus 2. I firstly grab the frequency. This is my unordered map for my DP value. Then I went on and grabbed the previous element, which is just previous element, back element, which is element lesser than element minus 2. And this is my answer, maximum answer or maximum sum. I went on to all the elements inside my frequency array because that contains all my distinct elements itself. Then firstly, I will go and find my back element itself. For that, I went on and find the back iterator. Back iterator, as I showed you, frequency contains the sorted elements. I'll do a lower bound of element minus 2. Now, this back iterator, back IT, IT is an iterator. Back iterator can point to begin. If it is not pointing to begin, then I will go and do minus minus. Then I am now pointing to the previous, previous one. Then I will grab its pair. But because it's a map, because you know, it's a frequency. Frequency is a map. Map is a pair. Every element is a pair. Pair, I will have first and second. First is the key. Second is the frequency. I want the key itself. So I'll grab the key itself. Okay, now I have grabbed the key, which is lesser than element minus 2. After grabbing the key, I will simply update my DP value. DP of element is maximum of DP of your previous element, element into frequency plus DP of the back element. And thus, ultimately, I will grab my answer, update my answer, and also put your previous like current element as the previous element for the next iteration or next for loop. And ultimately, you will get your final answer done now you can see you are simply using your map that's the reason again you will either have to use a map or you have to sort any ways you will encounter a complexity of o of n log n and for sure you are using a deep value so you are, you, you are using a space now can you improvise it obviously you can because if you look very closely your dp value only x only tries to access the previous value let's say if you are at here Either it, start, either it tries to access your previous value or it tries to access the value lesser than element minus 2. If I am at 7, in worst to worst case, I could have had a 5 and a 4. Thus, I can have a 5 or a 4. Thus, in my dp value, I, am, I will be accessing either the 6 or I could access my 4. And I could access my 4. So, in worst to worst case, in your DP, you only need to store three values. Or you can say these are three values, last three values. This is what you want to store by their balloons. You only want to store these three values in your DP. And thus, you can optimize your code to only use your, your DP will only contain three values. And thus, you can also optimize your space to get things done in O of one space. Time will still remain O of n log n. Because either you have to use your map to just do a lower bound, you will have to do a binary search. Either you take the array itself, then do a and do sorting, or you can just simply take your main uh, this thing itself, your main uh, map itself, and then do it. One thing you can say, Aaron, after sorting, I will maintain a DQ, DQ it kind of a structure, which means after sorting, I will maintain a DQ structure in which anything which is not in the bounds of my three elements, I will remove them from a DQ and I will push elements in my DQ. But still, you were only able to perform this operation considering your array is sorted. So you will have to have to sort the array itself. Cool. I hope you guys got it. You can again do it in O of 1. I did not do it because just to do it in O of 1, what will happen is I will have to remove the pair from my frequency array and while iterating on the frequency map, I cannot remove a pair from the map. While iterating, I cannot remove it. 
So it's the reason I have to change the entire structure itself just to take in consideration a DQ kind of a uh, data structure and then sort the elements, grab the frequency. Again, to monitor the frequency, I will have to iterate as a sliding window approach and thus get things done. Cool. I hope you guys got it. Again, I'll have you comment. Go and try it by yourself. It is not that hard. See, you realized that you simply have to use a simple DQ just to pop out the elements which are more than your element. Okay. You will only keep the elements, three elements. Because in that three elements itself, you will have your previous element of minus three which you wanted. Cool. Bye-bye. Take care. Again, bash like button. Helps me a lot. Bye-bye. Take care.